I know, I know. I promised you some responses to comments, and I promised you some possible Elon Musk tweets. Oh, no, I'm sorry, posts on X. But, um, you know, there was just a lot of news today, a lot of uh, surprisingly shocking, amazing news today. So let's get right into it. Let's start off with the fact that Nishta is probably defanged now by the N the FSD. I mean, defanged with regard to FSD. I'll talk to you about that in a second. Let's start with this instead. According to um, uh, James Cat, which he goes by Tesla Fan MTL on X, he says Tesla is having a strong end of the quarter in June in both Europe and China. He thinks 430,000 is now a reasonable estimate for second quarter deliveries. But I wouldn't be surprised with even higher. I think the risk of 430 plus, I'm sorry, less than 430, the risk of 430 greater than 430 is, is greater than the risk of less than 430. He further said uh, the 20,000 print here, the 20, a possible $20,000, 20,000 print from China this week with resurgent European sales in June opens up the possibility of even 435 to 440K. Well, that puts him a lot closer to Brian White. And remember now, James Cat is by far, he's got, he's number one in terms of being able to pick shipping, shipments. Uh, Brian has typically been better in terms of production than pretty much anybody. I think he's number one on production. Um, James uh, is, uh, you know, very, very good at the shipping side. Um, I'm out of the game now. I don't do it anymore. Troy Teslike, who is, you know, also comes in pretty strong. He, uh, last time I checked, he's still at 415,000 and he isn't updated since I think last Monday. So he'll probably update tomorrow or Monday, give his final number. Uh, and I'm guessing that some of these other guys, uh, you know, if you'll notice, even um, uh, James Cat hasn't really given us his final number. He's given us a rough range at this point. Maybe he doesn't want to play the game anymore either. We'll see if he comes in with a specific number. Um, okay, then we have from, um, let's see, we also have, okay, so let's look at that Nishta information again. Tesla can now challenge all rulings and the courts can decide whether Nishta, I, some people, people say I pronounce it all wrong. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration can shut down Tesla FSD because it disagrees with something. For instance, not stopping fully at stop signs when 90% of the people do not, and it's not a safety issue. Dan, I, I see. So uh, we had... Uh, uh, let's see. I thought I had something. Here we go. Warren says the Supreme Court overturning Chevron may mean that Nishta no longer has any authority to regulate FSD. What motor vehicle safety standards has the Secretary of Transportation prescribed regarding self-driving cars? He can't find any. When I look at the Nishta investigative documents regarding FSD and autopilot, I don't see any reference to any standards that are allegedly being violated. So you see, we may be over that. That might be the end of that. So then Dan Ives, more information from Dan Ives here. He comes out this morning and he says on CNBC, Tesla is recovering. It's the comeback kid. And he sees a big upside in the second half. He says that we've probably hit the bottom, that this will be, whatever number this is will be the bottom and we'll just keep accelerating from here. He sees a big upside uh, potential for the second half with regard to the stock price. He points to China, Europe, and 8.8. 8. He also says that a Trump presidency would be bullish for Tesla, but not for EVs in general. I think it is especially bad for hybrids if the IRA is changed. That's me speaking. I think that the the uh, IRA being scaled back or completely eliminated would be really bad for hybrids. Uh, but my expectation is that scaling it back for BEVs only to a much smaller dollar amount is the most likely situation if Tesla, if, if Trump is uh, elected. Or possibly he listens to Elon and eliminates the whole thing because Elon says he doesn't want any subsidies. He doesn't want subsidies. He doesn't want benefits. To He doesn't, he doesn't like any of it. Thinks the government should stay out of it. I would personally like to see some of these helpful approaches to anchoring 
uh, to anchoring. What did I write? What did I write there? <laughs> to uh, mining, to refining, and to manufacturing of strategic products. I'd like to see those stay in place personally, and that's a conservative speaking. I know, I know. We're supposed. I'm not supposed to be in favor of any kind of uh, of uh, help to industry, but I think that these are strategic decisions with regard to strategic products, such as the batteries and the cars themselves are strategic. And so I believe that that would be something we want to protect. Anyway, um, I uh, if we look back here, uh, Gary uh, has also something to say. Gary says, uh, 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 where where is it here? Oh, here we go. Um, he says, with sent Gary Black, uh, he, by the way, it's Gary Black 00, zero if you want to find him on X. Gary says, with sentiment so poor for next Tuesday's second quarter deliveries, Wall Street is at 440 still. It's not going to be, probably not going to be 440. Um, uh, but he says the whisper number, most recently consensus is closer to 420. There's a decent chance of an upside surprise on Tuesday, which we just talked about, especially if we get another 17,500 in China. Also, with the last two days of the quarter being over the weekend, there's more opportunity to pull in deliveries. An upside surprise isn't that crazy. Quarter one downside surprise was huge. That's me speaking. That's not Gary. He wasn't clever enough to think of that. <laughs> Look back to the first quarter. The downside surprise was massive. So this is hard stuff to estimate. I don't care what these guys, these guys go to a lot of trouble to get these estimates. They look at all, look up all this publicly available stuff, stuff that I don't want to be bothered to look for. They go to all this work and they come up with these numbers, but they're not that solid, especially not on, you know, up to and including when the, when the numbers really come out on the second. Um, and so this could be way off. We could be over 440. Who knows? We'll see what happens on Tuesday. Anyway, my feeling is that anything under 420 is probably going to be looked at as a miss by the market, may or may not have a huge impact on the stock price, but probably would have some impact on the stock price on Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, until things pick back up again. But if we're over 430, over 440, I think that's going to be a-okay. I think that people are going to be excited excited if it's over 430 or 440 and just continue the momentum that we've been seeing. We'll also be looking for any notes attached to this uh, second quarter number on the second. There's commonly like a note or something to give us some idea beyond just the raw numbers. Um, let's see. Somebody responds to Gary. Gary, can you take a look at this? fundamentals really don't matter in this type of market anymore. It's about the sentiment and the Tesla sentiment has changed big time over the past month. I mean, just look at the options inflow today, over 200 million inflow today, this will be Friday, over 200 million inflow today alone. I rarely talk about, oh, see, let's see, that was from, let me just tell you that, that was from Real Nick Mugali, M-U-J-G-A-L-L-I, -L -L if you want to follow him. Real Nick Mugali. So a big inflow in terms of options on Friday for Tesla. So sentiment probably is shifting. I guess I've been talking about that for over, I don't know, 10 days, something like that. All right. Now, listen, you know me. I don't talk that much about the uh, competition. It's not really what I you know, work hard on. But Rivian has been so much in the news. I really think I got to talk about it. I've never personally like the looks of their truck. <laughs> I'm not a truck guy, but I don't like I don't like the headlights. Maybe you do. I, let me know in the comments below. I'm curious. Um, I don't like the truck in general. Uh, uh, truth is, I don't think they have more than a 50-50 chance of success, maybe under a 50-50 chance of success. That's because I don't think they're executing very well. I don't think they're very good managers. I think they've got some great engineers and they've come up with some really good ideas. Um, and I think that, you know, they're, from what I hear, they're making some good trucks and making some good products out there. Um, but they need new leadership really, really badly. And I think it's probably too late as it stands right now. Um, even with this additional runway they might get from VW, don't think it's going to matter. This is Randy Kirk. And you know that just watching the show especially if you watch it more than about seven minutes. If you watch the entire thing, it really helps. Even if you just leave it on in the background, don't pay any attention to me. I understand that some people find that my voice is so uh, 
as, as a perfect way to go to sleep. And I'm not even talking about my content, which might be a perfect way to go to sleep also. But some people say that the sound of my voice helps them go to sleep. Anyway, <laughs> listening to the entire show, even if you've lost interest, that helps me. So do that when you can. I'm trying to build up my ex uh, following. If you're on X and you're not following me yet, would you do that? That'd be fantastic. And then likes and subscribe and notify tomorrow morning. I probably will do <laughs> some of your comments tomorrow at noon. I probably will do some of the uh, tweets or X posts from on X from Elon. That's probably what I'm going to do. And, but I'll tell you what I know I'm going to do. Tomorrow night, you will get the normal Monday morning show, which is at Sunday night. And we talk about all the news from the next from now till then. And then we also talk about what's going to be happening in the week ahead, which is going to include employment numbers. And it's also, you know, the beginning of earnings season. Again, two really important things with regard to all of our expectations, plans and stuff. Anyway, and if any of this stuff is bringing you a benefit, it's bringing you a financial benefit and you could spend, you know, spare three bucks, five bucks, 10 bucks. That'd be just fantastic. That would be through Patreon down below. Okay, the Cobasi letter has this. You as consumers have exhausted their savings. $2.3 trillion of accumulated savings have been depleted by Americans since August of 2021. In other words, $67.6 .6 billion of savings has been spent by U.S. consumers per month. As savings have declined, consumer credit card debt has spiked by $290 billion, or 40% in three years. In other words, to fight rising prices and elevated interest rates, U.S. households have gone into debt at the fastest pace since the 2008 financial crisis. Part of it is just getting used to spending that kind of money. You have the extra and you spend it. Did you guys do that? Let me know in the comments. Did you overspend because you had that extra money from the federal government and because you, you couldn't spend it on you know stuff during the COVID and then all of a sudden wow, you've got all this money in the bank, so now we can take that trip or we can build on that additional stuff that we want to do in the house. Anyway, that's what everybody, that's what people did, okay? And they got used to spending it and now they don't have it anymore. Their pay, pays, pay didn't go up, didn't keep up. Yeah, everybody that talks about, you know, Biden versus Trump, during the Trump years, people's real income went up and during the Biden years, real income has come down. From the All In podcast, they have they noted they are all in high tech. They said top high, I'm sorry, hiring the best, the very top tech employees, much, much easier than it was even a year ago. There are fewer openings for these people. And so there's more supply and less demand. And so now people are not having to pay as much and they get really great people for a good price. Now we're going to get the job numbers this week and plenty more and the earnings and all that. But what are the likely directions for the market? What am I seeing? You know, I'm reading this stuff all day long. I mean, literally, I'm working at least 45 hours a week for you, pulling together the news, pulling together all the information that I can, all the charts, all the graphs, <laughs> everything that I can find. Plus, I'm bringing on these great guests. And these great guests are, what, what do you think is happening when I'm getting these guests on here? <laughs> Not only are they helping you, but they're helping me to be, get greater understanding because each of them has their own area of specialization. So here's what I think, having pulled all that together. Number one, the first half gain in the S&P, actually in all three indices, way mean the first half gain, the really solid first half gain, based on history means that there's way more than a 50% chance that we will finish up on the S&P. Earnings are expected to be very good in the second quarter. So that'll be coming out in the next four weeks. The guidance is going to be the key. We got to look at that. But if the earnings are good and the guidance is good, then the market's going to respond to that. There are no Fed, Fed, there are no Fed cuts coming. Sorry, there just aren't. If you're hoping for Fed cuts, they're not coming. Okay, That's, I just got to tell you. Yeah, could there be one in November? Maybe. Uh, there's no, I got, I got nothing for you. I, we'll talk about it more tomorrow night when we talk about the numbers that are coming up this week. I think the numbers that are coming up this week are going to put it to bed. It'll be over. Anyway, 
Number four, there's utter confusion now with regard to the presidential rate. Nobody likes that kind of confusion. However, right now, the betting heavily favors Trump. And that generally would be, forgetting my personal opinion, that is generally good for markets. A change in government is generally good for the economy and good for markets. Number five, some are saying we need to see the bull broaden out a bit. I've been saying that for about seven months. <laughs> it never happened. I keep thinking it's going to happen. But now people are saying, no, they're starting to see a little broadening out. And that really is necessary. Really, we really need to see a broader, a broader uh, people spending a little of their money on some of these other stocks. And number six, others, uh, and myself, I'm now seeing headlines, are thinking that summer doldrums will happen. And then a continuing bull. So 5%. 10% could even be 20%. And you know what? I, I said it the other day. I'm going to say it again. A 20% haircut would not really hurt very many people, especially if it if, if after the 20% haircut, it went back up 30%, which is probably about what's going to happen. All right. Well, I don't actually, I'm not sure it's going to go down 20. It's probably going to go down 10 and end up about 15, another 5% at the end of the year from where we are right now. That would be a Pretty good guess based on history. All right. Depending on what is said in the aftermath of 8.8, here's what I think is going to happen with Tesla. I think if we get uh, a lukewarm, you kind of, a, okay, here's what we're going to do. And, you know, here's what's going to happen with Robotaxi and Cybercam and blah, 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 blah. And, but it's going to be next year. And here's, you know, here's a, here's a rendering. Here's, here's the cab, but, you know, we're really not going to roll those out. Anyway, if it's kind of a soft deal, we probably end up around 300, okay? If we get a little stronger deal, we get like, okay, you can start using your car as a robo-taxi starting in a month or two and or it will be supervised or it won't be supervised. If we've got something really concrete that's gonna happen fairly soon, then we probably end up between 300 and 700 by the end of the year. The more concrete, the higher the number that we'll see. And then, of course, by the end of 2025, I'm saying we're at 1,500 because by then we will have robo taxis, we will have cyber cabs, we will have bots, we will have the new Gen uh, 2.5, we will have semi trucks almost ready to roll off the new lines in Reno. I mean, we'll have so much going on by the end of 2025. I'm saying we'll probably be very close to 1,500. Kathy Wood now says her 2,000 plus estimate is for 2027. All right. Jim Farley, as you know, is out beating the drum for EVs the last couple of days. And this morning, I did a video about that where I spelled out his vision. And his vision does not include FSD. Only hands off on the highways. Maybe maybe sleeping on the highway, but you get off the highway, you've got to take over, okay? He also says on sunny days. <laughs> so he doesn't see... He doesn't see Ford as being a mass market car in the future. Looks as a niche player. That's where it doesn't see a, they're going to have a $30,000 vehicle. It won't be till 2026. And you know what that means? 2027 or maybe never. Um, anyway, it was kind of, was a, you know, he's a good guy. I like to watch him. Very, very good speaker. Enjoyed listening to him. But if you really want to hear what he said this morning, I'm going to put a card right there that gives you the, the video I did this morning, which is, doing amazing thousands to, I don't know we're probably going to do 12,000 views on that video um very important stuff on there if you haven't seen it yet you want to go check that out by the way I also did a poll and 60 percent of those who answered the poll said they think Jim will change his mind about FSD after 88 eight. <laughs> okay listen as usual <clears throat> I told you I'll plan to do a, a, a comments and questions video tomorrow I also will probably I'll do my regular Monday morning show on Sunday night. Um, and then uh, maybe there will be a, uh, a, a an Elon Musk uh, post on tweets, post on X, <laughs> X post facto. I keep, I, I you know, as a X, yes, X, whatever. Anyway, I think I should stop while I'm ahead. I'll start sounding like Joe Biden. That's all I got for you. It's been great talking to you.